Before we even dive into things, I just want to say that I completely understand that this video seems a little bit out of place considering that travel is totally off the table for all of us right now. Basically, I shot this in the last week of February, and by the time I had finished editing it a couple of weeks later, it no longer felt appropriate to share with, you know, everything going on right now. I think we can all agree we live in a bizarre world, and after waiting a couple of months, I wanted to post this and just laugh at the absurdity of it. Oh, hello, yes, thank you. Okay, what flavor is this? Um, ma'am? Ma'am? It's kind of like opening a time capsule. Anyway, I hope you enjoy, and I hope you guys are doing okay. I'm not sure there's anything like packing your bags and moving to a new country. To this day, it creates a feeling in me that is as thrilling and as poignant as ever. If you don't do stuff that scares the shit out of you from time to time, how do you know what you're made of? The world is messy and unpredictable. What are your thoughts on me leaving? Sad. Yeah. Excited for you. I'm very excited for you. We gotta go places. I wanna go places too. Saying goodbye is hard. I've never been good at it. We all cried. Time to go. It doesn't matter what you use to document your experiences, whether it's a pen and paper or a microphone or a camera, but make an effort to capture them. It's always nice to look back and see how far you've come and the things you heard and saw. This entire video, by the way, is shot with my phone, so you don't have to have pro gear, I promise you. I gotta document every step. There's something about being on an airplane that puts things into sharp perspective for me. I don't know, I guess flying above the clouds in a giant metal cylinder is a concept that my brain cannot fully grasp. It doesn't matter how many times I do it, it feels like we could all plummet from the sky at any moment. And yet we don't. Memento mori. Remember that we all must die. It's a humbling reminder, and not something to be afraid of, I think. It gives me a little bit of urgency, an immediacy to my actions and decisions. There isn't always a tomorrow, and you won't get very far if you don't trust anyone. Soon, in a matter of hours, I will be landing in a place where the people communicate with each other using a different set of sounds. Sounds I find both beautiful and fascinating. Everything from what they read to what they drink is different. They have a different history, a different set of experiences and traditions, and I get to learn how they see the world. And how little we understand of our own world. Memento homo. Remember that you are only human. I don't think we're here to be anything else. You can't run from yourself, nor should you try. This trip is to continue the work that I've already started. And who knows, maybe I'll meet a girl, or I'll be inspired by things I could not even imagine right now. It's impossible to know, but the thought alone makes my heart jump into my throat. I think about all the things I'm going to encounter, the things I'm going to create. It's exciting. None of us really know where we're going, which is something I've said before, and yet it's an idea that continues to astound me. Rain began dumping out of the sky, just as I made my way out of the metro. A man wordlessly helped me up the stairs with my luggage. I turned to thank him, but he had already disappeared. Thankfully, the bus that I was waiting for arrived quickly. <sighs> Exhausted, I turned off the lights. So it's almost 8 a.m., my first day here in Paris. And when I think about all the stuff I need to accomplish, all the things I need to do, I gotta get a SIM card, I've gotta get groceries, I've gotta unpack my stuff here, I've gotta begin the apartment search, I've gotta start meeting people. There's so much stuff that I gotta do. I get a little bit overwhelmed, uh, actually very overwhelmed, but because I'm a one-trick pony, um, I'm just going to approach all of this like it's a big experiment. Um, this is an adventure, okay? I'm lucky to be able to do all of this. So, no bitching allowed. Here I am, <laughs> one thing at a time. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna work out. I think first things first, I'm starving. So, um, food, food is, food's usually my top priority anyway, so. Moving to a new country is like a big endeavor. It can feel very overwhelming. Um, and what I've learned is you need to do stuff that will boost morale, even little things. Um, so one of the very first things I've done is buy some food. And for whatever reason, that's very comforting to have that. Um, so 
I feel better already. <laughs> you really have to take everything with a grain of salt because I think moving to a new place that you don't know can make you feel like you don't know anything, that you're really dumb. Even the simplest of things is difficult. Um, and it's frustrating and it can really like knock your confidence, but it's also like a, a very humbling sort of experience um, to start fresh and to admit that like, you know what? I don't know what it's like to live here um, and I'm here to learn. Okay. So you definitely have to be, I think, in problem solving mode um, and just not complain about stuff. I just cleaned out the fridge. It was disgusting. And you know, that is something that would normally like really bother me, but this is just a temporary Airbnb. So it's not the end of the world. I cleaned it out, whatever. Just moving, uh, focusing on moving forward. When you go to a foreign country, it's like, you don't know anybody. Even though I've been in this country in the past, I don't know that many people here in Paris. And so it's like completely starting fresh without connections and contacts. The word friend is kind of sacred for me. I don't use it very lightly. Um, and so it takes me a while to build up the kinds of relationships that I want. But as a short term way of trying to make things a little bit better, you know, I, I really always recommend being as nice as possible to the people you're interacting with. Wherever it is that you're getting coffee or buying your uh, groceries or whatever, just put a little extra effort, like whatever, just say whatever, make a little bit of conversation. People will usually light up. They're maybe not having the best Wednesday morning of their lives, but being friendly and being nice just creates sort of a better energy and something about that makes it just feel like you're a little bit less in a country full of strangers. I found that in my experience, my first month in any given country is always um, a little bit more expensive than what it usually ends up being because you know you don't know where the best places are to shop. Um, you're stocking up on stuff, you're figuring things out. And so I tried to kind of build that into my budget, give myself a little bit of buffer so that things aren't more stressful than they need to be. I realized that I'm just learning as I go you can't possibly know what the best way to do things is just upon arrival. Let's have some breakfast. So one of the things that I think freaks people out about moving to a new place and all this change is that it represents a lack of control. You're essentially, you're essentially in foreign territory, starting over on most things. And look, there's no way around that. Like, I'm not even going to say that this is easy or straightforward, but I think you can kind of reframe things and look at it as a totally clean slate, a fresh start. How often exactly do you get chances to completely start fresh and take a look at your life and think about the ways you want it to improve or change? It's so much easier to do that when you're starting completely fresh than when you have so much, so many established habits and an established rhythm that's it's harder to break. If I think a little too hard on all the things I have to do, it does feel a little bit like I have a mountain to climb, but one thing at a time, one thing at a time. Mm -mm 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 -mm. What is in this? One thing I didn't mention earlier, but that I think is incredibly important is not just getting like a Metro pass and a way to easily move around the city with tickets, bus tickets, whatever, you know, some sort of monthly pass that probably is the most economical, but it's, getting to know the system well, feeling comfortable with it, understanding it. Because every country, every city works differently. In Rosario, when I was living in Argentina, they had an incredibly intuitive bus system where every other street would go in the same direction. So even if you didn't know where you were, you could very easily guess what made sense and where to, you know, what kinds of buses and where you needed to go essentially. In Mexico City, I never took the Metro at all. Uh, people told me it was generally pretty unsafe. Um, and so I did a lot of like bike sharing and the scooter system and Ubering, believe it or not, it's incredibly affordable there. It's just important so that you can feel comfortable and at ease getting around the city. This is gonna be useful. Okay, so, 
Uh, I'm very impatient as a person in general. So I am i don't wanna sound like a hypocrite giving this advice. Honestly, this advice is as much for me as it is for anybody else. But it's so important to be patient when moving to a new place. Like you cannot have everything solved within a few days or even a few weeks. Like it takes a while. Um, and so I'm in the thick of things with the apartment search. Um, I literally just got off the phone with the first person who's interested in um, letting me go visit. I very strongly believe that moving to a new place is, it takes a long time to adapt. It's not a question of days, it's a question of weeks and months. It's, you have to make friends with being in limbo for a while. Um, and that's very scary. I think we all like security and stability. And that's certainly something I'm looking for. Um, but I also just want to embrace what's going on right now. Without patience, you can totally wear yourself out and really just not get anywhere, waste your energy. Um, so I just got off the phone with the first person who's interested in letting me visit their apartment. Uh, so we'll see how things go. I'm gonna keep my expectations realistic because it's the first apartment I'm visiting and I'm picky. Um, so we'll see how things go. It has been almost two weeks since I arrived in France. This is the final little update for this video. I managed to find an excellent apartment option. At least, you know, it's one that I'm happy about. I pulled it off in like eight days. Uh, I think that's pretty unheard of. As far as I'm aware, it's not typical in a city like this one. That's called intensely going after something. I'm very excited. I'm gonna be moving in in a couple of weeks. It's going to be my home for the next six months. And it's just starting to dawn on me that my new life here is beginning. I think longer term, what I'm looking for are friends and just like a sense of belonging. It's tricky, it's tricky when you're a foreigner. I will always be considered a foreigner here. I will always have my little American accent when I speak French. And I'm just going to have to accept that that's a part of my identity while I'm here. I don't even know what to say. I guess big things are coming. I'm excited, I get a good feeling about this here. There's just so much going on right now. Even one year ago, this would have seemed so impossible in my own mind. I can't believe I'm here. I actually still can't believe I'm here. Can't believe it.